And welcome back. So, we're going to keep going on these quests. Hi, Mechatork. As you can see, he has the title King of Gnomes. He is the King of the Gnomes. Um, I think he's the oldest surviving leader. And I think he's one of the few leaders that haven't died. And we just learned about Operation uh, Nomergon. He's just going to talk about some RP stuff. You can listen if you want to. But for the sake of time, I'm just going to head on. Again, if you want to listen to the RP, that's great. Um, Operation Nomergon is actually pretty interesting. It was a uh, pre-launch event for Cataclysm. Um, where gnomes attempted to retake Nomergon. Uh, the gnomes have been out of Nomergon since the second war, which is in Warcraft 2. Might have been the third war, but I think it's the second war in Warcraft 2. Um, they had a trog invasion and Gelbin Mechatork, that guy back there, um, tried to get rid of the trogs by putting a little bit of radiation into the atmosphere of Nomergon to kill them while letting the gnomes escape, hoping that the gnome medics would be able to take care of it. And then Thermaplug convinced him to up the radiation to a stupid amount. And that ended up irradiating a lot of the gnome citizens and making Nomergon inhospitable. But Thermaplug was able to stay in and somehow take control of the leper gnomes. And that's that. Um, if you're interested in it, you should probably read up on the lore. I'm not that great on the lore in WoW. I know a little bit. I know enough to get by. If you're looking for a good WoW lore YouTube channel, I highly recommend Novel87, as would a lot of other people. He has a channel that's almost completely dedicated to WoW lore. And we're just going to keep on questing. Make sure when you get multiple quests, because I think this is the first time we've gotten multiple quests, pick up as many quests in a location as you can, because oftentimes they will all be for the same area. Like you see, we have three quests right on top of each other there. So it's going to be a lot easier to do all three quests at once than it is to do a quest, go back, do a quest, go back. You know, it's going to be faster. It's going to be easier. It's going to be all around better. So I guess I can talk about resource management right now. Every class is going to have some sort of resource. Every class and spec is going to have some sort of resource associated with them. A lot of them are just your basic resource bar, which is right under your health bar here. For instance, hunters have focus, mages have mana, uh, warriors have rage, demon hunters have fury or pain. But some of them are going to have secondary resources, such as I think retribution paladins still have holy power. Um, let's see... Shamans are interesting because technically their main resource is mana, but for enhancement in elemental shaman, they also have uh, maelstrom, which is what appears under here, and then they have a second bar for their mana, and that's what powers their major abilities, and mana powers their smaller abilities. And So you're always looking for resource management. In this case, uh, again, with Hunters, you're looking at focus. So, your focus or your resource, depending on your class, is going, to prevow is going to power all of your abilities. And if you run out of it, you won't be able to use your abilities. I'm trying to run out of focus here. But I don't think I'm going to be able to. I know I did before, but... Um, if, you're, like, if you're healing, that becomes an issue in longer fights and in harder hitting fights um like right now in heroic and taurus we're progressing through there well yeah we're progressing through there and some of the healers not all of them but occasionally in longer and harder hitting fights they start saying that they're out of mana and that's always fun to hear as a tank so all right we did all three of these quests and we're just gonna run back and I'm going to speed up here so that you guys don't have to watch this this boring part. 
Alrighty then, now we're going to turn in. And we actually get something incredibly important here. We get a bag. Now bags are often overlooked in equipment. But they are incredibly important. Bigger bags are going to help you out a lot. But as I said in my tips and tricks video, you don't want to go too big too fast because they are expensive. If you have a tailor though who can make the bags and you have the materials for them, that's great. Um, like I said, I'm not going to send anything over to this character. Even though I have a bunch of stuff that would make my life a lot easier, but I'm not going to. Including you, thank you. And we got everything turned in. And yeah, back over here. From what I remember, this guy sends me all the way down there, so that's going to be another speed up. I think. Let's see. Are you going to send me all the way down there? Yes, you are. Alright, speed up time. And we're back. So I'm going to talk to this dwarf here. And he's going to give me multiple quests. When a person gives you multiple quests, they'll usually pop up like this. Just accept all of them. They'll normally bring you back to this page. Except both of them in this case. So this guy wants me to free some gnomes. Dwarves. I think they're gnomes. People. And kill some trogs. Simple enough. <laughs> And normally if you play with sound on, if you're doing something that your character doesn't like, they will talk about it. For instance, you might have just heard my gnome say, I don't have a target, because you need a target to attack. And we're just going to go around, murder some trogs. Um, the reason I decided to do Hunter... And the reason I was also going between Hunter and Rogue was because I don't have a Hunter at 110. I'm just talking right now because there's nothing else for me to say. And I feel like I need to talk. The reason I chose a Hunter was because I didn't have a Hunter at 110. I also don't have a Death Knight or Rogue or Monk at 110. Uh, but I have a Monk at 98, maybe 99 now. So I'm really close on Monk. I have a Hunter at 64? And I have a rogue at 55. Um, I probably should have done rogue, but I prefer ranged characters over melee characters. Unless they can tank, then obviously I prefer tanks. So, I'm just going to do hunter so that I don't get bored with the character. And then it's all of a sudden like, oh, why are you not playing it anymore for the YouTube channel? And I'd say, well, I'm really bored with that character, so... That does happen sometimes, though. Sometimes you'll get a character up to, like, level 80, and you're like, yeah, I'm kind of bored with it. I'm not going to play this anymore. Like, I'm bored of my druid who's at 110. Okay, let me stop talking about that real quick. Um, so we just got a new spell. Normally, well, not normally, when you're at lower levels, spells will just drop right on your bar here. However, when you're at higher levels, they will only appear in your spell book because your main bar is going to be full. So if you open up your spell book with P... You can see all of the spells that you do have, and all of the spells that you're going to get. Just scroll through, it'll also tell you the level you're going to get it at. Like, I'm going to get Disengage here at level 8, Dismiss Pet at 10, all that stuff. And I'm going to actually be able to tame new pets at level 13, but I'm going to keep my little bunny. Hi, bunny. Alright, let me turn these in. Cool. And into the Trog Cave we go. And actually, I think that's a good place to end this video, unfortunately. So I will see you all whenever I upload the next one. So uh, have a wonderful day, everyone. <laughs>